I mentioned yesterday that there's something religion-like, or it seemed like I was inferring that there was something religion-like about the idea of absolute value. Um, like when we, one of the pre-Darwinian things that seemed to mark human society was its idea that there was absolute truth and that human beings had access to it. Um, with Darwin, that really began to be shaken because, you know, his ideas on origin of species, etc. Um, and I think that uh, Nietzsche and Freud and um, Jung and all these people since have sort of refined that idea that we may not be in a position to attain absolute truth. Um, and that might be one of the... <coughs> new hallmarks of what we might call modern thinking is, you know, post-modernity, this idea that there is no actual, uh, we live in a civilization or a society or um, some sort of edifice where, where the civilization we live in doesn't have any definable character, <coughs> it doesn't have any agreed upon absolute maxims, um, any agreed upon absolute truths or ideas, um, and that absolute truth kind of does sound like somebody is implying that there is that there is a, a truth out there that we have access to um, sort of trying to argue the, the way that the, the, the discussion is going we're trying to argue which one is actually blind belief the belief that there is no uh, absolute value or the belief that there is absolute value from my perspective um, my position is very easy to ridicule as religious because of I'm I really have no trouble at all with religious imagery and I discuss it all I don't have any beliefs in anything but um, you know what do you mean when you say belief right it it all depends on you know belief is in the eye of the beholder what you take as your axiom and what you do with that axiom um, I would say that um, my position is often referred to as a nihilistic position, but that's simply because I don't take anything for granted. I don't take anything as solid belief. I, you know, perspectivism, anekandavada, and especially when you're using dialectic, logic, syadvada. It's you're constantly switching points of view, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't really matter whether or not you can actually take anything for granted when you when you get used to thinking like this and you get used to looking at something from every conceivable angle and everything that you do you look at that way which arguably is a nihilistic position in some ways it is in some ways it isn't I suppose again the sevenfold theory of maybe that I always refer to um, <clears throat> what's nihilism you know uh, goes down to the what do you believe? Do you believe that we have a solid bedrock on which to base everything, or we don't, or we may not, or we even if we do, we wouldn't be able to actually, there's, there's more than one way to see the solid truths that we have, and language is limited. So it, I, I'm trying to discover what the fundamental axioms are that, that we would disagree upon when you're talking about absolute value versus relative value or absolute value versus um, first-person value. And Mendham uses the example of self-cloning, you know, clone something that's identical to yourself in every conceivable way. Okay, well, each one of those clones will then have to live in real time, and it's, their experiences at that moment will start to diverge. The second you start experiencing the the first person perspective of reality. The second you start to experience that, you're changed forever. Um, <clears throat> there's something about, something law of karma ish about that, um, where your experiences basically form what you call your character. That's what makes you individual, is your own experiences. Everything that you have experienced, no one else has experienced because experience only takes place in the first person. So I might clone a bazillion of myself that is exactly the same in every conceivable way with attitudes the same, memories the same, everything the same, DNA the same, whatever. Everything is exactly the same. And then you flip the switch, you turn the on button on on all these clones, and suddenly they're different. All of them. 
all of them will start to see reality from a different perspective from then on in forever you know the, for, uh, the second you're in the first person perspective your character your you-ness diverges from everyone else's um, I made a video long ago about the process of being born um, you're in the you're in the womb you're jerked out of the womb everything is completely and utterly and totally different than it was when you were in the womb um, I often liken that to the dream state you can't remember your dreams because the the, over, the underlying reality that the dreams were taking place in is so different from your waking world that even if you can remember it you, you can't put it together in your own mind in terms of a coherent memory at least in terms of the memories that we're used to having I would say the same thing about any experience when I sort of create uh, X number of clones of myself they're all the same as me until the first person perspective kicks in then they all diverge utterly diverge um, we can sort of infer things but even after that it's dodgy how do I know what that person is experiencing I don't um, and that's the problem I think with absolute value it's um, not only is it potentially wildly inaccurate but we have no way of measuring whether or not it's accurate we have no way of even coming close we can sort of say this is more accurate than that perhaps but it, we still don't know how close we are to an actual accurate depiction of what the other person feels first person perspective is just that it's first person you cannot share it or it isn't first person anymore unless we're going to argue something along the lines of panpsychism and you see how these things arise it's not always just woo and and um, belief and everything like that there is actually a lot of logical thinking for things like panpsychism and reincarnation and things like that and you can even get it out of things like Camus and South when you read you know you can almost see that they're toying with these ideas even if they don't come out and say it um, but <clears throat> How do you get a first-person perspective of, of another entity? That's, I guess, the question. Uh, that's, uh, and it's kind of a challenge as well. How do you, how do you know what something else is experiencing? Um, can you know? And let's say that you use your faculty of empathy to find out. How do you measure how accurate it is? Well, are you measuring it how accurate it is in terms of it's more accurate than this? potential scenario, i.e., if I see somebody stub their toe, I know that that hurts because I've felt it myself, okay? But there's a lot more than just a bunch of pain impulses. There's perhaps anger involved, there's perhaps frustration involved, there's perhaps impatience involved, there might be humor involved, there might be any number of things that you experience when you stub your toe, which are yours alone, and someone else might look at it and go, ooh, I bet that really hurts. But if you're sort of the person, the kind of person like me, I, I'm inclined to laugh when I stub my toe. I think that it's, I don't know, I think, you know, I'm, I have the kind of sense of humor where <laughs> I think it's funny when I, I see somebody get kicked in the nuts or something like that. Very, I have a very lowbrow sense of humor. Um, so, I, again, when I stub my toe, I think it's funny. Somebody else might go, that's not funny at all. That is terribly painful. But you, we've all seen the guy laying on the ground screaming in agony, having been kicked in the shin or in the nuts. And he's also laughing at the same time. There are so many permutations on how you can experience anything that you can sort of, you might be able to say this is a more accurate view of his experience than that. In other words, I might imagine that um, that it's more like if I kick somebody in the shin, it's more likely that they're going to feel negatively about that than positively. But really, do I really at the end of the day know what their overall experience of that is? I don't. Um, we can sort of use sort of syllogisms, as I say, to compare them, but as opposed to, but, but that doesn't really allow us to compare it to the actual experience. We don't, we don't know how close our estimations are of someone else's experience. We can say that this is closer than this. In other words, getting kicked in the shin is more like getting, more like stubbing your toe than it is like, say, um, eating an apple. Okay, but what I'm saying is how do you compare it to the actual experience how do you compare it to what it actually feels like to do this experience is multifaceted and it takes place on an infinite number of levels 
every experience you ever have. So I don't think we can actually deal in things like absolute value, unless, of course, we want to sort of drop our anchor, as Zapfi would say, and say, this is absolute value. But absolute value, if you ask me, is precisely the sort of thing that Petro Resul Sofi would call an anchor.